Uh, it's DeAndre Hunter at Atlanta Hawks. She listen to the three-point conversion. Hey, good evening. I uh, hope you're doing well. Uh, going back to the Utah game, it seemed like kind of the main reasons you guys were able to hang in there for so long was how well you turned the Jazz over and then scoring points off turnovers. I guess how pleased with you were you in that area in that game? And then kind of looking into tonight, knowing Phoenix doesn't turn the ball over, how much is that going to be part of the game plan or – half-court defense kind of preparing the most for? Yeah, I thought that was a big positive for us out of that Utah game was our ability to create points off our defense, you know. So I thought our guys competed defensively, um, got in passing lanes, great hands, deflections. We'll need some of that tonight, especially on the road, to get some easy points, generate some offense for us. So that's a big key tonight. Uh, what was your second question? I just said kind of just in general, knowing they don't turn the ball over, do you put more focus yeah. on kind of half-court defense tonight and how pleased or have you been in that area the last few games? Well, we'll still try to turn them over. You know, we still got to continue to be aggressive and hopefully they participate in that. You know, they, they're very smart. They're clever. Obviously, Chris Paul controls a lot of these, these games for them. He does not turn it over, makes good decisions, uh, and their team as a whole does. So, um, but we got to find ways to, to – continue to play fast on makes or misses even if we're not getting steals or stops off of that we still got to rebound and run and, and generate uh, offense off our defense in other ways just getting stops and running and, and pushing the pace and I think LaMelo and our entire group did that in the first half that's what really got us the lead and especially in that third third quarter start there a lot of those points we scored early in the third were off our turnovers off their turnovers so um, it's going to be a challenge tonight though our half court defense got to be good it's got to be really good against this team. Thank you. Yes, sir. Rick, Rick Bunnell. JB, any thoughts about um, Gordon beyond the obvious that he's available tonight regarding that injury? I'm sorry. What, what about it? Well, just, just beyond the obvious that he's available considering, you know, the hard fall he took. I just wondered if, if that was going to be particularly on your mind about being, you know, watching him, that sort of thing. Yeah, no, we'll watch him, Rick. I mean, I'm going to trust him, you know, and, you know, I've had a conversation already, you know, a few minutes ago. I'll continue to talk to him throughout the game and uh, make sure, you know, he feels comfortable out there. And if he doesn't, we'll pull him and, you know, next man up. But um, he's going to give it a go tonight. And, you know, as long as his pain tolerance is where, you know, low and we can, um, you know, get him through the game, that's a positive. So I'll just watch him, Rick. I don't have any minute restrictions on him there. I just got to watch him, see how he handles himself in that first quarter. Um, but that was good news for us today. Hey, I'm curious because I, you know, I remember this. This used to be an issue sometimes with Kemba. When when somebody is like a naturally tough person, do you as a coach need to sort of save them from themselves sometimes? You know, do you absolutely. have an independent responsibility in that way? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of times you got to save save guys from themselves. The, the competitor and the fighter in them wants to go out and compete. And sometimes as the head coach, you got to, you know, make a, a more big picture decision for them and help them through that. And they're not going to agree with it. That's the challenge. A guy like Kemba, a guy like Gordon, they want to compete every single night. So um, you got to do what's best for him and the organization as well to protect them from themselves. Thanks. Yep. Rod Boone. Hey, JB, I know you're focused on the task at hand right now, but uh, today, Governor Cooper, um, you know, he, he basically announced that uh, venues could kind of have fans come back. I know you mentioned a couple days ago about just how different it is when you play on the road compared to that home. So I know you're focused on the task at hand right now, but possibly second half of the season having fans. Is that something that excites you guys? Are we looking forward to about, too, about that? Yeah, very excited about that. I think, I think it's great for our guys, you know, a, a young team, an exciting, fun, young team. You know, they deserve to have fans in their arena. And it's nobody's fault. That's just where we're at. But it's a it's a positive step for us. So I'm thrilled for our community, our, our city, our players. I don't know what that number is going to be, but uh, just having a different spirit in there. You know, right now it's very it's very quiet and it's, you know, it's a different vibe. I thought our guys responded well in the Utah game to it. You know, they, they felt the energy of the crowd. Tonight, it looks like Phoenix has some. I don't know what their numbers are, but it looks like they have some uh, in the stands tonight. So hopefully our guys uh, get to feel that again. Uh, but I'm excited for our fans just to have some fans back, and it's exciting for our young group. 
And the other thing is, with the run Terry's been on lately, Terry Rozier, can you just put into words just what it's been like to kind of have him get to rescue you guys at times when you haven't had things out there, maybe you going the way you want to? Well, I think that, you know, a lot of, you know, good teams in this league, they, they have different guys step up. And we have a guy right now, and we've had multiple guys throughout the year step up. And Terry right now is playing with great confidence. And just knowing night to night he's going to be there is huge for us. He's willed us into – staying in games, winning games. Uh, I love his consistency and his spirit right now. You know, he continues to play the right way, but, you know, Roddy's put the work in and he's ready for this moment. He always says that to me. I'm ready, coach, you know, and he's put himself in a great position. Our guys trust him. I trust him. Uh, we believe in him and he's having a heck of a year. Thank you. Richard Walker. Uh, coach Brega, Richard Walker, CarolinaSportsHub.com. They released the second half of the schedule today, kind of your reaction to it. I mean, obviously that's down the road, but now that you know you've got the rest of the schedule and everybody, you're going to play everybody two or three times this year at Long Beach. Well, it's a dense schedule. You know, there's there's a lot, a lot of games uh, compacted into a short amount of time. So it's going to be a great challenge, not just for us, for every team in this league. Um, not a lot of nights off. You know, we're going to have to be smart with how we – manage our, our players' bodies, their minds, their rest. Um, not a lot of practice time. We're going to have to learn through games, through film, through walkthroughs um, to get through these, these 40 games. But um, that's our season. Our guys are ready for it. We'll take it one game at a time. Hopefully the break gives us a little bit of a, a recovery period as we head into that dense schedule. But for us right now, it's about these next five games and making sure we finish on a high note as we head into the break. Uh, the most important ones tonight against Phoenix. Danny Thompson. Coach Danny Thompson with the three-point conversion. You're going against tonight, you're going against one of the better defensive teams in NBA. Kind of uh, kind of similar principles to the Utah Jazz. They're fourth in defense. The Suns are ninth also in three-point percentage. How do you game plan to try to get yourself more open shots? Is it more of a drive and kick to open shooters or is it more about ball movement tonight? It's both, you know, I, I think driving kick is really about ball movement and about spacing, you know. Uh, this is not about playing one-on-one -on -one to create driving kick. It's really about moving the ball and finding the right guy to attack who can make the play to driving kick. So uh, we don't want to do it on the first side against these defenses. You know, Utah was a similar defense and they were a challenge. Uh, we were best doing that in transition and playing with pace, getting downhill and kicking. Tonight, we're going to have to do the same thing. And to do that, we got to get stops, get out, run. Hopefully, we're getting deflections and some steals to get out and, and put some pressure on their defense. Uh, but against, against their half-court defense, it's about ball movement leading to driving kick. And that's, that's our game plan every single night. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate your time. Good luck tonight. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.